Hello, hello everyone and welcome to or welcome back to the channel. I am Blitzheart, better known as Blitz. I'm a Minecraft content creator here on YouTube, a variety streamer over on Twitch, so go check that one out as well as my Instagram if you are interested. And today we are building this ultimate mangrove enchanting tower feat nether portal and there's a potion brewery inside as well. This is packed with survival functionality and I've had a lot of fun coming up with the design for it. We use a whole bunch of fun and interesting blocks including the skulk, some crimson and wood so it's going to be quite a task to pull together but I think it's going to be a lot of fun and coming on inside you can see we've got the enchanting room right here heading upstairs we have a little potion brewery here we've got some nether warts growing brewing stands an infinite water source for refilling water bottles right there up in that leaf block little balcony Further up the tower, this is more of a decorative floor with some armor, some paintings. Further up again, we have our nether portal floor. My goodness, that looks trippy. With a spot here for flying in and out of the tower as well. And if you know where to look, you can climb up this little spot right here and up the ladder to a secret little bedroom with a potion storage as well. Today's build is packed with details and chocked full of a lot of fun features and interesting blocks that I had so much fun building with. And if you didn't already know, it is also part of a series of Ultimate Mangrove Survival Builds I am doing here on the channel. We have already done the Mangrove Starter House and the Ultimate Mangrove Storage, so feel free to head over to the tutorials for these two and do them first. We have the coordinates for this location, the seed for this world, and all of that fun stuff already apart. Part of the series so if you want to start the series from scratch feel free to head over to the starter house and follow along from there but today this build will both work as a standalone enchanting tower in your own worlds or as a really fun addition to the series if you're building it alongside me and now with that little intro to our mangrove ultimate survival series and today's build out of the way i have for you guys the material list right here some of the materials on this list might be a little bit more difficult to gather such as the jungle blocks the skulk blocks and the blaze rods for our brewing stands but i hope you have a lot of fun taking the time to go on those adventures finding those materials tracking down that jungle finding that deep dark and adding those in as you get the blocks for them but with the material list shown out of the way, feel free to pause, write down, go get everything you need. Then let's head into the tutorial. Now the first thing that you're gonna wanna do for creating this ultimate mangrove enchanting tower is going to be to clear some space for it because if you're building it as part of our set of ultimate mangrove survival builds, you're gonna want to destroy this one tree right here as well as this little bush out back just to create a bit of space for the tower. Otherwise, you're just going to need to lay out and select an area for the build. Now, these here are the dimensions for today's build. This little piece right here, this white and magenta line of 12 blocks, you only need to worry about if you're building it here in our mangrove world because this is how we are spacing it and where we are connecting it to our existing builds. Otherwise, you're just going to need a 9x9 nine nine square of space with three squares right here of space on the left side there's going to be a little platform here down in the water and two extra squares worth of space here on the right because we're going to have a little overhang a little awning that will protrude out this much higher up on the tower so just make sure you have a little bit of room on the right and a little bit of room on the left from your nine by nine square area and if you are building it right here you're going to want to get rid of the three spruce gates that are in this space right here and count out one two three 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 blocks. And then this area right here is going to be where our mangrove tower is built. So with our area picked out, our dimensions laid out, let's launch straight into the tutorial. All right, so the blocks you are gonna need to start off today's build are our deep slate bricks, deep slate tiles, cobbled deep slate, and stairs of those three deep slate variants. And as you can see, I have gotten rid of our wool layout now, but I have left a few markers down here in the water that show where the deep slate foundations of this tower are gonna start. This is still the exact layout of our nine by nine square, but this foundation will not have any corners to that square. So each side will be seven long, but then the next corner will start from the next block along creating a total roughly nine by nine amount of space. 
So coming in right here, we're just gonna start bringing up every layer to the surface of the water. And then one, two, three, four, beyond that point with a stair on top, just rotating through our mixture of deep slate texture blocks. So then turning the corner, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start building our way up to the surface of the water. Then one, two, three, oh, four. <laughs> that was terrible counting. One, two, three, four. And then a stair on top, just like that. And then we're gonna continue all the way around the foundation of the build. So each side, seven long, and then skip a block where the corners will be. So it will be a nine by nine space. Bringing up a mixture of deep slate, four blocks above the surface of the water with stairs along the top except for right here on the front where these five blocks right here are going to be blocks instead of the stairs to create a smoother walk for entering and exiting the build onto our little bridge. So let's start bringing in this deep slate foundation. And there we go. Now our foundation should be looking something like this, where we have all of these sides that are seven along with stairs up on the top. And the next little detail we're going to be adding to this is we're gonna bring in a bunch of stairs just to break this up and add a bit more of a rubbled and weathered look to our tower base. So just going around and starting to bring in a few little stairs like this. Now, if you're lazy, you could just do these above the water. I'm also gonna do them below the water, but it's important to remember if you're doing them below the water, sometimes they're gonna do this where they're not waterlogged. So you'll wanna grab yourself a bucket of water and just make sure those stairs are waterlogged so we don't get any weird water happenings around our beautiful textured foundation. All right, and then with a bunch of stairs added around the foundation, it should be looking really, really nice already. The next thing we're going to do is grab our blocks of deep slate and just create a little floor or lid for our foundation upon which we will be placing our tower. So just going through our texture scheme and filling in this floor. All right, and now this next step, feel free to skip the first half of it if you're not doing today's build as part of our series of mangrove builds. If you are, we're going to be adding in the bridge to connect our ultimate storage building to our new tower. And we're also gonna be adding the little side platform down here on the left to make it easier to boat to and access this tower. So grab yourself spruce stairs, spruce slabs, spruce trapdoors, campfires, a shovel or some water bottle, something like that to put out the campfires. We're gonna need some note blocks, mangrove logs, a little bit of spruce fence and some ladders. So starting over here at our ultimate mangrove storage with some spruce slabs, we're going to start bringing in our bridge. So you don't need to copy exactly where I'm placing my slabs and trap doors for the texturing, but we're just gonna start bringing in this bridge. So I'm gonna start with trap door, trap door, slab, 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 trap door, slab, trap door, slab. Then we're gonna go three slabs across and bring up a layer of trap doors so that we're gonna slowly incline the bridge upwards to meet with our foundation. Then next we might start bringing in some campfires, something like this, continuing along with our trap doors. Trap door, trap door, campfire, campfire. Then into slabs, something like this. One, two, three another campfire, more slabs. Then we're gonna bring in some stairs. So we're gonna do a little placeholder block so we can place the stairs facing this way. Then just go like this, one, two, three. Then from here, we're adding some more trap doors and some more slabs till we are right here. And of course, putting out these campfires. There we go, so that is the basics of our little bridge already done and it already looks really cute. I love this rickety style of spruce bridge and floor if you can't tell by all the mangrove stuff we've been doing so far. Now we're gonna start adding in this platform. So grabbing some ladders, going right here next to the bridge, we're going one, two, down like this and then we're gonna make a tiny platform in this corner. So go trapdoor, slab, 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 slab. Like that, we're gonna make this one here into a whole block. So adding a slab underneath and a fence. So it just looks a little bit more supported, this platform. Then another trap door right here and another trap door just round the bend. Then I want to add some more ladders. So I'm gonna go one, two, and I want to do three right there. So I'm going to quickly swap that into being a 
block just like that there we go so three ladders right there and we have this fun little corner platform then down here on the ground grabbing some spruce slabs first off we're gonna go one two three four five right here and bring this out the second layer then spruce trap doors we're going all the way around this little layer of slabs just like that note blocks we're going this corner here and this corner here then using our mangrove logs we are connecting these platforms all the way to the bottom of the water there we go just like that and now we're going to texture up this little platform a bit so we're just gonna then grab some campfires and we're going to start swapping out a few of the blocks in this little pattern to be campfires instead so maybe something just like that that's really cute and then we're gonna put these out and we have our little platform, another fun little platform, and our bridge all added in. All right, and now we're going to be bringing up the first floor of our tower. So we're gonna want looms, packed mud, mud bricks, mud brick stairs, dripstone blocks, one dark oak door, two dark oak trap doors, one dark oak slab, and two dark oak fence gates. And coming over here, it's important to remember with placing your looms that the direction you're placing them from is the side that is going to have that bit of string on it. So we want to try our very best to keep this side right here hidden so we only get this fun little reddish color of the looms exposed. So starting right here, one block in front of where our ladder is, facing this way, we're gonna add our first loom. Then facing the opposite way, add the second one because we're gonna have our door right here. Feel free to place that one in. And then we're creating our first little layer with the loom. So another one here and another one there. Turning the corner, it is one, two, three, four, and five. Turning the corner again, one, two, three, four, and five. And one, two, three, four, and five. Oh, right there, without any of the corners. So it's just one block in from where our foundation is. And then next, we are grabbing our packed mud, mud bricks, and dripstone to start bringing in our next layer so we're going about this in a very similar manner to the foundation we're going up by four blocks and then adding a layer of stairs on top so one two three four stair and just continuing that exact same thing all the way around exactly like we did with the foundation And now with the first floor of the tower brought up, we're gonna grab our stairs and much like we did with the foundation, we're just going to rubble this design out a little bit, including making sure we have an upside down stair over the door and then going around with our mud brick stairs, we're just gonna start adding in that extra bit of texture and detail by breaking up the design a little bit. And there we go, the last little step for this first floor of the tower is going to be grabbing a dark oak slab and placing it right here on the lower half of this block, one block above the door, then a trap door either side of that and a dark oak fence gate sideways underneath each trap door to create this cute little awning over our front door. All right, and launching straight into the next floor of our tower, we're grabbing some note blocks, mangrove logs, mangrove planks, mangrove stairs, strip mangrove logs, and a little bit of red terracotta. Starting with our note blocks, we're gonna do a placeholder block and add them in in each of these little corners one block inwards just like this and using our mangrove logs connect them all up one two three and one two three then from each of these note blocks we're bringing up a log one two three four and another note block on top one two three four and a note block one two three four and a note block and one two three four and a note block then connecting our note blocks again with our mangrove logs, just like this. Then we're gonna start filling in this space. So we're gonna have one, two, three sides with windows and then a side with a door and a fun little awning that we're gonna bring out in just a minute. So starting here from the front, we're just going to bring in a little bit of texturing of the stripped mangrove, a stair at the top right there, add a little bit of red terracotta maybe, might make this one some terracotta, more stripped mangrove and some planks, something fun like that. 
and there we go that is the space for our first window and we're doing sides just like this for one the front second the side on the left and on the back right here for three windows And then over here on this far left side, there's going to be a door instead. So we're gonna go one, two, three, add some stairs, and then continue just doing the exact same texturing all over this area. So something just like that. All right, next we're gonna add a little bit of gray stained glass panes and just fill in our windows with those. And grabbing a dark oak door and popping that one into the doorway. And then we're gonna bring in some flower boxes under our three windows and add a little bit more detail to these windows using some dark oak trap doors, dark oak slabs, dark oak fence gate, a little bit of moss, a little bit of grass blocks, some ferns, red tulips, and dark oak saplings. So coming around the front to our very first window, we're gonna start by going slab, trap door, slab right here. Then using a mixture of moss and grass to fill in our little bed right here. Then up above the window, we're doing a gate on the upper of the two glass panes with a slab above it, just like that. Then filling our little garden bed with a few bits of greenery. And you're also going to need some spruce signs and a mangrove trap door for each of these garden beds. So mangrove trap door right there and then spruce signs either side of it and just around the sides of those blocks as well to create the little holder for it. And repeating exactly those steps on all of our window sides. Okay, now you should have a few very cute flower beds decorating each of our window sides on the tower. We're gonna come in and add the awning here in just a second, but first grab yourself a spruce trap door, a spruce stair, a few mangrove logs, a barrel, a dark oak button, a grindstone, one chain, one bookshelf, and one lantern, because we are going to add a little sign in for our enchanting building. So using our spruce stair, we're actually gonna knock out this sign right here and turn that one into a spruce stair with a spruce trap door, right there in front of it. Then with our mangrove logs, we're going one, two, three above that point with a barrel on the end, dark oak button on the end of that, grindstone underneath, chain, bookshelf, and lantern. And we have a cute little sign. Okay, next up, we're going to bring in our little awning balcony side piece that this doorway here is going to lead to. So grab yourself some dark oak trap doors, dark oak stairs, dark oak plants, dark oak slabs, spruce fence gate, spruce fence, and two deep slate walls of whatever variety you choose. Grabbing our dark oak trap doors to start off this awning, we're gonna come down to this mud segment and add one trap door here and one trap door here, just one block down from our stair trim. Then with dark oak stairs, we're going one, two, three, block four, just like that. And the same thing over here. So one, two, three, block four. Then connecting these up with one, two, three trap doors, one, two right here, one, two right here, and filling the rest of this space with our dark oak slabs. Then with our two brick walls, we're going one and two. Spruce fence gates, we're going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. If that wants to place, there we go, wonderful. Then with our spruce fence, we're going one, two, three, and one, two, three. Then we're grabbing our dark oak slabs and we're going from the top of each piece of fence, going across one, two, three, four, connecting these up. Then behind them, we're going back and up, back and up, back and up and full block right there. Same on the other side. So we're bringing this back and up, back and up, back and up and full block just like that. Okay, and now we're going to be using a selection of crimson wood pieces to texture up this little piece of roof. So I'm just gonna go immediately in with the texture. I'm gonna go maybe a piece of the crimson hyphae, a plank, another hyphae, slab, stair, stair, Mm, hyphae, hyphae, and plank. Then just grabbing some trap doors, maybe one, two, and three. There we go. 
And now as we're moving further up in the build, don't forget you can use scaffolding or just build a little bit of a pillar with a ladder in order to keep getting up here to keep adding onto the build. And for this next tier of the tower, we're going to grab some combusters, spruce planks, strip spruce, oak logs, spruce stairs, dark oak trapdoors, and dark oak stairs. Starting with our composters, we're going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three and one, two, three, just like that. Next up, we're going to bring up four blocks of height with our spruce texture mixture, which is going to be the planks, stripped spruce, and oak logs. So just starting to bring up a little bit of an interesting texture scheme with those something like that and doing this same little four block high piece on every side on top of all of our composters and boom just like that we have the next four sides of our tower already almost done next with some dark oak trap doors one block down from the top of every side we're going to add one two with stairs above them that are upside down like that with a trap door between them around the next side trap door trap door stair stair trap door trap door trap door trap door stair stair and trap door trap door trap door stair stair Next, a little bit of spruce stair action. We are going to do our thing and break up this wall a little bit to make it interesting. So adding in a few tiny, tiny bits of texture to the wall, even just one on each side, I think is going to be more than enough here. All right, and now I have just realized after building the entire roof of the tower that I forgot to add the tiny little balcony for this little segment of the tower. So I'm gonna slot this into the tutorial at the right spot for where you should be building this in terms of being up to building this layer. But if you can't see the balcony in a few later clips, it's just cause I'm adding it in a little bit late to where it should be getting built. But grab yourself some dark oak slabs, oak trap doors, jungle trap doors, one dark oak door, one barrel, one flower pot, and one azalea bush. And with the dark oak slabs, we are going one, two, three, right here. Knock out these two blocks. That's where the door will be. So placing in the dark oak door. Oh, and then heading back outside. I'm gonna place a barrel right here with a flower pot and an azalea on top. Then I'm gonna go jungle trap door, oak trap door, jungle trap door, oak trap door, jungle trap door, getting rid of those placeholders and opening all of those up to make our little balcony. Okay, next up we are grabbing some deep slate. We're gonna need the bricks, the cobbled, and the tiles in walls, stairs, and blocks. With our walls, we're coming into these currently very empty corners and adding in one, two, three, or five walls with a block on top, just like that in each of the corners. Then with our blocks, we're also adding three blocks on top of our little dark oak supports here. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, just like that. And next with our stairs, we're adding them to the sides of each of our corner pieces of the block. So one, two, one, two, one, two, and one, and two, just like that. Okay, the next thing we're going to be adding to our tower is the spot for another hanging piece, quite similar to what we did for our sign, but this one is going to be hanging some skulk. So I'm going to save all the little bits and pieces where we add skulk details for the end of this exterior portion of the tutorial. So <laughs> with a spruce trap door, spruce stairs, some mangrove logs, one barrel, one dark oak button, a grindstone, and a number of chains, we're coming right up here with a spruce trap door here. Duh, um, spruce stair right here, mangrove log. We're going one, two, three, four, and then a barrel on the end with a button right there. Grindstone underneath the barrel. We're going one, no, <laughs> one, two, three with the chains, just like that. And then one, two, down from the grindstone and just leaving that as it is for now. Now bringing in the final floor of our tower, we are grabbing some mangrove logs, packed mud, mud brick, stripstone blocks, mud brick stairs, a few jungle trap doors, and like four red stained glass panes. And this is a fun little trick in terms of the design of this tower, where we're using a bunch of different blocks. We have a block palette with a heap of variety, but to kind of make it all seem more cohesive and tie things back together, you can see we've reused the deep slate from down at the very bottom up here at the top, and now we're reusing this mud and drips 
stone scheme from the bottom up here at the top as well but bringing in some mangrove logs to add a bit of variety to it. So coming onto each of these stairs in all the corners we're bringing up mangrove logs one two three and four. One two three four one two three four all the way around. All right, and then on the front and the back sides, these are going to be one of them, an area where you can fly through some water straight into the top of the tower where our nether portal is gonna be, and the other, just a fun decorative piece. So with our stairs, we're going one, two, three, and four here on the front, adding jungle trap doors to create this little trim where the color matches in really quite nicely with the mud and mirroring this on the other side. So one, two, three, four stairs, trap door, trap door, trap door, trap door, and trap door. There we go, just like that. And then on each of these other two sides, we're doing a window piece, very similar to our window pieces down here, but with a different block scheme. So we could go dripstone, dripstone, mud, packed mud, dripstone, packed mud, mud, more mud, more mud, more mud, boom, something like that. <laughs> very fun and exciting. And then filling in the window with some red glass panes and the same on the other side. Next up, we're bringing in flower boxes on both of our window sides, exactly the same as we did down on this lower level. So using our dark oak fence gates, we're going on the second half of the window with an open gate and a slab above it, just for a little piece above the window. Then down here, we're going slab, trapdoor, slab with a bit of moss and a bit of grass, mangrove trapdoor in the middle of that, spruce signs around either side. And then adding in tulip, fern, dark oak sapling and repeating this little series of details on the other side. Okay, next up with our window details all added on either side, we're gonna grab some dark oak planks, dark oak stairs, dark oak slabs, dark oak trapdoors, one deep slate tile wall, one dark oak fence and one chain to bring in the trim and the kind of spine of our roof piece. So coming into the corners right here, we're gonna start with a slab with a trap door on top. Then trap doors on the lower half of the block either side of that with slabs on top of those trap doors. Then dark oak stairs, we're just going one, two, three and repeating that same corner piece. So slab, slab, trap door, trap door, trap door, slab and back up into our stairs. Slab, slab, trap door, trap door, trap door, slab, stairs again, one, two, three and all the way around till we meet back up with where we started. Next, to start bringing up the spine kind of piece of our roof. Now, little tip for doing tower roofs like this, I love doing the cross section of my roof first and then filling in the often more complicated sides if you're relatively new to doing tower roofs like this. Now, this is what I would define as a classic block stair tower roof because the spine follows a pattern of going up like this with a block and then a stair and then upside down stair, block, stair, upside down stair, block, stair, and once we reach the middle right here, block, 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 with our wall, our fence, and our chain. And then we're doing the little block stair series from the midpoint of each of the sides, so bringing up block, block, stair, upside down stair, block, stair, upside down stair, block, stair, just like that. And then with all the sides of our roof spine brought up, we're just gonna add a little bit of extra detail to that with some dark oak trap doors. So on every exposed block face on the way up, we're adding a trap door. So one, two, three, and then all the way around the lower of the two blocks here at the top, dark oak trap doors as well. And repeating on all of the sides. Then with our roof spine brought up, we're gonna grab a mixture of mangrove and crimson blocks to create a very slightly gradiented roof here. So we've got stripped mangrove logs, mangrove planks, mangrove stairs, mangrove trap doors, and stripped crimson stem, crimson planks, crimson stairs, and crimson trap doors. And starting off the roof, we are gonna come over here and go one, two, three, one, two, three, on all of the sides, creating this little triangle of our mangrove blocks. So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three, and one, two, three. Very cute. Next, mangrove stairs, and we're adding stairs on top of each of those sets of blocks. 
Then with an upside down stair right here, we are adding a block with a stair on top and another upside down stair of some form in here. We're going block with a stair on top, facing with a buddy inwards like that, and then doing the opposite of the way those stairs are facing on the other side. So up, block on top, inward facing stair, up, block on top, inward facing stair. All right, and on two sides opposing each other, I'm gonna grab a crimson stair and actually swap for one of these out. So one right here, skip a corner around this side, one right here, just like that to create a bit of a kind of random effect. And where we have those crimson stairs, we are going above that point with a mangrove block of some form. So we might just do the hyphae on both these sides, not hyphae, log, strip log, just like that. Then in all the other places, we're bringing in some crimson and just starting to bring up a little bit of that crimson action. Just like that. Then crimson stairs, we're going stairs on top of all of these blocks on this layer. Then we're going an alternation of hyphae, block, hyphae, block just like that with our crimson stairs on top then we're just going to grab some trapdoors and detail this up a little bit so maybe starting from this side here i might add in maybe a trap door here and a trap door here a trap door here and a trap door here something like that and then up a layer we might rotate around doing similar, just like that. Then grabbing some mangrove trap doors and coming down a layer. Where do I think these would be cute? Maybe one here, one here, one here, and one here. And then I might add mangrove right here, right here, right here, and right here. So this is a fun little thing. You can see with the way we brought this together that it's supposed to look kind of random and textured, but we actually had quite a regular pattern to the way we went about that. And that's one of the fun things with texturing. You can develop little patterns and ways you kind of go about bringing together a very quote unquote randomized texture where it's actually pretty simple and easy to do in following a regular pattern of doing things. But if the pattern is devised well, it's gonna look pretty random and pretty Pretty cute just like this tower roof. Now with the exterior of the tower mostly done we're gonna add in a few more details so grab yourself two deep slate walls of any variety, some chains, lanterns, spruce trapdoors, spruce fences, moss carpet, glow lichen and some spruce leaves. We're gonna start by finishing up the bridge here coming underneath with some spruce fence we're going one two three just like this and over here on this side maybe one two three three like that will be cute and add a lantern right there and then i'm actually going to grab some of these spruce trap doors as well and just create a little secondary layer about that size underneath the bridge just so from a side profile it looks a little bit sturdier all right and now with some moss carpet and glow lichen we are going to detail up these platforms a little bit so using our moss carpet maybe one two three glow lichen here moss carpet one two lichen one two over here carpet lichen and coming down this way we're gonna start adding some in and you can actually place moss hovering over the water which you very much would know if you've been building along with the set but i think it's a really fun detail so then maybe another piece right here and then over this side maybe just one two three oh no three four there we go something like that Next with our walls here in this right corner here to where the door is, we'll go one wall with a lantern on top and then in the opposing corner, we will do another wall with a lantern on top. And the next thing we're gonna be adding are some spruce leaves kind of scattered around the base and lower level of the tower. This is a personal preference one. If you'd prefer to leave out the leaves and not add this step, you're more than welcome to. I think it just depends what kind of look you're going for with the build. So if you are gonna add the spruce leaves, Let's start bringing them in. So I'm just gonna kind of start scattering them. And I'm gonna drag them a bit up the build and I'm gonna have them kind of climb down the base a bit as well, like this kind of thing. I might even go one, two to kick it upwards that little bit more, just like that. 
Then coming around here, what am I thinking? Maybe one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one. Maybe get rid of that and make that one a leaf just for a little bit of differentiation. And one, two, like that. Then turning the corner, add one here. And one, two, three, four, one, two. And maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. Drag it down and bring it out a little bit on that side as well. Then round the front right here, we can just go one, Two, knock that one out and one two three all right and now adding a few more little chain and lantern pieces in up on this little balcony here we're gonna throw one lantern here coming up here to where this balcony is we're gonna do a chain and a lantern hanging right above it just to make sure this area is lit up as well and then coming around the tower again and up here I'm just doing a lantern hanging above this side because this side is going to be the one that we enter and exit from if you want to have some fun flying into the top of your tower and this one we're gonna block off with some skulk and speaking of which I think it is time for a special mission so what is your mission obtain skulk location these coordinates right here close your eyes if you don't want to get spoiled on where to find some skulk and your reward is having a cool looking build with some skulk details and I really wanted to try and include as many of the blocks from the mangrove update in this build as I could and the skulk was of course one that I thought would fit really well with the magical themes of an enchanting tower and we're gonna start by hanging some from our chain piece here so grabbing skulk skulk catalysts and skulk veins first with the skulk we're gonna go one two three four five catalyst skulk there we go that's quite a long little strip of skulk and then now we're gonna decorate it so coming one two down we're gonna go one two more pieces of skulk turning a corner we're gonna go skulk catalyst skulk turning the opposite corner we're gonna go catalyst here and skulk beneath it and then around the other side we're gonna go catalyst skulk as well then with some skulk veins we're just gonna decorate this so we're gonna start adding little bits of the skulk vein just kind of all over to make it look a little bit more detailed like there's a bit more going on here there we go something like that that's pretty cute and fun maybe another piece here and then up here i want it to look like the skulk is kind of slowly spreading out from where the skulk is so we're gonna add a little bit up onto the top end of this hangy piece Thing that I don't have a name for there we go something just like that a splash of skulk up there then with our hanging piece of skulk done we're gonna add another little cluster down beneath it as though it's almost dripping from up there or maybe this is where it's being picked up and carried upwards from I don't really know but I thought it was a fun visual detail so starting with that we might go one two three catalyst skulk have some skulk come down here as well maybe something like that go upwards one right here and then more skulk right there might even then make this a little diagonal bit of skulk just like that and then coming down underneath we want to build this out a little bit more as well maybe make it look like it's dripping downwards into the water oh I did not mean to open that there we go something like that and add a little bit of catalyst action in there as well there we go quite fun and then just mix it up by adding of course a few of the skulk veins on there as well and a few underwater as well which I didn't even know you could place these underwater so that is a fun little tidbit for you guys too and now I also want to have a few veins kind of creeping onto the wall of the tower, like it's spreading outwards from this point. So just a few little veins right there, I think are really cute. I might even move this stair piece over one, which is a tiny little thing, so I can have one more piece of sculpt vein right there. And now coming around this corner as well, we're going to add a little hole in the base of the building and a little bit of skulk detail to look like it's almost damaging the structure of the building as well as a fun little thing. So starting right here, we're gonna go maybe one, two, three, and maybe change these two to skulk right here. This will be a skulk block, get rid of this. This can be a skulk block, get rid of that. One, two, these ones will be skulk. 
sculpt here. Maybe a catalyst for this one. More sculpt for these two, not there. And then coming in here, we're gonna make a little floor that is like a two by two space. So we'll go sculpt like this. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And looking upwards, we can make this one and this one skulk as well. We just can't make that one skulk because it is exposed to the inside. So we'll just leave it. We'll add a catalyst right here. Maybe put a vein there to cover that up. And then we're going to start adding a bunch of veins around here as well to add more detail to the build. And I really, really like how this skulk looks. It's such a fun detail. So just kind of starting to scatter those in like a growing outwards pattern from where this hole in the building is. Maybe even spreading some a little bit upwards onto the tower itself. And fanning it outwards in this direction a bit as well. I might even make, we could make one of these like a skulk block too. It's growing out this way. There we go, I think that's quite cute something just like that so it's really kind of spreading outwards and growing all over the build all right and now our final skulk detail is actually going to also be the backing for the nether portal that we're going to have up at the top of the tower when we do the interior portion so using our skulk we're just going to build a big skulk wall right here to block up that window and then from the outside, it'll be looking something like this. And we're just going to add a few skulk veins to make it look a little bit more interesting. Maybe something just like that. And now let's decorate this awning as a last little stage of doing the exterior of today's build. So with some brown carpets, barrels, flower pots, and a few things to put in the flower pots. Starting with the carpet, let's go one, two, three, four barrels one two flower pots one two three and then maybe a proper gule here flowering azalea here and an azalea blow it right there and with that the exterior portion of the build is about done i know we have a big empty window up there but that'll be easiest to tackle as we're doing the interior so we are going to come back to that one and with that i think it's time to launch into decorating the inside of our very cool looking tower all right, now to start off the interior of the build, we're going to be doing our enchanting room here at the bottom floor. So grab an enchanting table, some bookshelves, barrels, looms, oak logs, strip spruce logs, spruce planks, ladders, and one spruce stair. And we're gonna start by building our ladder up to the next floor. So just adding in our spruce texture scheme in one strip right here to the left of our front door. Just like that and a spruce stair upside down above that door then ladders all the way up on our spruce scheme blocks next we'll pop our enchanting table in the middle here and then we're going to do the walls as a mixture of bookshelves barrels and looms now i'm also just going to place spruce planks into all these corners so that we don't have mobs spawning in here you could also just put a torch in there whatever you want to do to conserve resources because this block will not be visible then next up with our bookshelves, I'm just going to fill all the rest of the wall space with the bookshelves first and then I'm going to mix around what that looks like by adding looms and barrels to our bookshelves. There we go, so bookshelves everywhere and then I might go a loom, a barrel, another loom and we can afford to change five of the blocks in this lower section without losing our enchanting table piece. That's important to keep in mind. So that's one, two, three or four and then I can do a fifth one over here I might do a loom right there next to the door I think that's quite cute and then moving upwards we don't have to be as considerate of what blocks we can change and what blocks we can't we can just have fun with it start playing around mixing blocks up and just making it look a bit more interesting than these plain bookshelved walls so there we go. It's a little hard to see, but these are what my walls are looking like now. And just to check, let's go to the enchanting table, do this, and we still have level 30. Make sure you've still got your level 30, and this should be looking all good. All right, and the next things we're going to need for this interior are dark oak slabs, dark oak trapdoors, dark oak signs, dark oak planks, dark oak logs, spruce logs, lanterns, grindstones, and a single oak trap door. And we're going to start by adding a little shelf right here. So on the third block up from the floor, two slabs, a trap door in the middle, and a sign right there on the right side. Then turning and heading up this way, we're going to pop an oak trap door right here. 
and this is going to be where the next floor will begin. So I'm going to do a little bit of a mix of dark oak planks, dark oak logs, maybe another plank here, dark oak log and spruce log, something just like this for a fun detailed textured floor. Then heading back downstairs again, we're doing a grindstone there in the middle with a lantern hanging from it for our light. And then to decorate our shelf right here, I'm gonna pop an anvil, an ender chest, and a pot with a lily of the valley. And this is really good as well because we also have grindstone access for repairing and disenchanting, and we have a bunch of storage through our little library where you can shove all kinds of enchanted books and lapis, all the relevant enchanting items, as well as the ender chest access. All right, and with the first floor done, let's do the next one. Okay, this next floor of the tower is going to be our potion brewing room. So grab yourself some soul sand, some nether warts, spruce trapdoors, a cauldron, a spruce leaf, two buckets of water, brewing stands, dark oak slabs, dark oak trapdoors, and there'll be a few other bits and pieces as well. Starting with our soul sand, we'll go one, two, three, and just use spruce trapdoors to make a tiny little nether wart planter, just like that. Then above it, we'll do a shelf for our brewing stands. So two slabs, trapdoor in the middle, brewing stands on top. Over here, we're gonna do a cauldron full of water and we're also going to do another tiny shelf right here with a spruce leaf full of water. And this should actually be an infinite water source that you can continuously fill up water bottles from. All right, and the last little step for our potion brewery room, you're gonna want two dark oak signs, one tripwire hook, some soul soil, some gray terracotta, some ladders, one oak trapdoor, and one lantern. First with the dark oak signs, we're going one here, one here, and a tripwire hook right there above the cauldron to make it look like a little sink. Then with the ladders, we're going one, two, three, four oak trapdoor at the top. Then coming up here, our next floor, we're going to do one, two, three, four, maybe with the soul soil and mix it up with the gray terracotta. Then popping briefly back down, we'll throw in a lantern right there. We're choosing to put it on the side, not the middle, just so it's not obstructing our ability to view and click on the brewing stands. And with that, that is our Prussian brewery floor done. Onto the next floor, grab yourself a cauldron, some dark oak stairs, dark oak slabs, dark oak trapdoors, dark oak sign, barrels, dark oak fence, spruce leaves, and two armor stands. And we're gonna start by going a dark oak stair right here facing this way from where our little ladder is, and one on the opposite side to make a little table upon which we will throw two armor stands. Above that, we'll do a small shelf, so one, two, three, with our two slabs and a trapdoor, three barrels on top of that, and a sign just on that left side. Over here, we'll go a cauldron, dark oak fence, and two leaves on top of it to make a little plant. Then you're gonna want some paintings because I thought I would add a few of those in here. Now, I want one that is too high for this spot here, so I'm just gonna use some spruce planks as a placeholder. Might just throw two of them there and do that painting. I think that's quite cute. Turning this corner, I wouldn't mind another little painting right here but I want a small one. So again, some placeholder blocks and maybe, which one do I like? Any, mini miny, mo. that one. I think that one's quite cute. And then over here, ladders going all the way up to what will be the next floor. And now in order to hang our lantern down into the floor we've been working on, we're going to need to place in the floor, which will include some obsidian from the portal onto this next upper floor. So grab some deep slate bricks, deep slate tiles, cobbled deep slate, and some obsidian. And we're gonna start by just filling this little back piece and then adding our obsidian. So one, two, three. I'm doing corners to conserve obsidian. Then we're going one, two, three, four. Another corner, one, two, three, four with the obsidian. Another corner, one, two, three. Another corner, one, two, three. So that will be where our portal is. Next, we're going to add a bit of a slightly textured obsidian, not obsidian, deep slate floor. There we go, something like that. And then our oak trap door will be right here. Then we can slide back down the ladder and add a chain and a lantern into that far corner. And this third floor is almost done. We just need to decorate our armor stands. Now, often when I decorate little armor stands like this in my house, I like to just use whatever random armor I have laying around from adventures. So don't get too caught up in it. I love using a mixture of different things. So that is going to be the armor stand look I have for these two armor stands. Then we are heading up to almost the last floor of the build. 
All right, now for this top floor, grab yourself some mangrove logs, some deep slate stairs, a few variants, water buckets, spruce stairs, spruce slabs, spruce trapdoor, dark oak trapdoor, and some ladders. First, we're gonna fill this little space right here with some deep slate stairs, just like that. Then mangrove logs, we're going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Then with spruce stairs, we're going one, two, three, and then a slab in the middle. And now we should be able to have our water come down. I'm gonna waterlog these stairs at the bottom first and then waterlog these three blocks right here. And there we go, we have a nice contained water wall up here at the top. Then we're also going to add a spruce trap door here, spruce trap door here, a, what will it be up here? I believe it's two ladders right here and a dark oak trap door there. Turning around, it's going to be a spruce block a slab, a spruce slab, and a trap door there in the middle. And that is a ceiling, and it will also allow us to have access to a whole nother floor right up here once we finish doing this up. And we're also going to add a little bit of gray carpet onto the floor, maybe just two pieces like that. Then for the next step of doing this interior, grab a lantern, a dark oak plank, a dark oak sign, an ender chest, an armor stand, four mangrove leaves, two dark oak fences, two composters, and a crafting table. Looking first at the side here with a ladder, we're going to place a dark oak plank with a dark oak sign on it and the ender chest on top. I'm not 100% sure this works in bedrock, but this actually makes a cheeky little staircase we can use to access this secret kind of sneaky floor. It's not super secret, you can see the ladder, but it's a little harder to access and a little less obvious than usual, which I think makes it just a bit more fun. Then coming back down here, we're gonna grow a composter here and a composter here, dark oak fence on top of each, two mangrove leaves on top of each of those, and then right here in this space, it is a crafting table, an armor stand on top, and a lantern hanging above it. And now for this armor stand, this is going to be a good one for storing an important spare set of armor and or for storing some gold armor that you're going to use to protect yourself from piglins and such when you journey into the nether. So I've just got a bit of enchanted gold armor to throw on here, a backup elytra, another piece of enchanted gold armor looking very, very fancy, and then grabbing a flint and steel, we can light up our portal. And then coming up to this top floor right here, we're gonna start with a little bit of cleanup. So we're gonna be knocking out a few of these blocks to allow us to have a bit more space up here. Might swap these blocks here to stairs facing this way on either side. Then with barrels, we're doing a line of barrels right here and a line of barrels right here as well. Then I'm gonna clean up how this roof looks. So I'm gonna add just a dark oak stair. That could be a block or a stair right there to fill that space. I'm going to add dark oak trap doors into all of these four positions. Maybe a crimson trap door right here and right here and right here for a bit of detail. Or, or actually make that a mangrove trap door there. And a mangrove trap door here as well just so it looks like we've put some time and effort into it. It's a bit more detailed. There's trapdoors around the place. I think that's quite cute. We're also gonna turn all of these four corner pieces into stairs instead. And then with a grindstone, we're gonna do a little hanging light right up there in the middle. On the opposite side of the floor to where our way up is, we'll pop a bed, an item frame, and a clock so we know when it's night and we can sleep up here as needed. Then item frames along the front of all of the barrels, and this is going to be a nice little potion storage. This will be a great place for storing especially things like fire resistance potions that you're gonna wanna grab before a journey off into the nether. So if you feel free to store all of your favorite potions up here in the potion storage as well. And then with all your favorite potions selected and your room looking nice and decorated by filling up those item frames, that is now our ultimate mangrove enchanting tower feet potion brewery and nether portal complete. All right, thank you all so, so much for watching today's tutorial. I know it's been a bit of a long-winded one. It has a very busy, messy interior and also a lot of detail going on on the outside. I hope you are learning a lot from creating this series alongside me. I hope you're enjoying seeing this survival world come together just as much as I am enjoying designing it. And of course, don't forget to leave a like, comment, 
subscribe let me know what your favorite thing is about today's ultimate enchanting tower build and any further functions or features you would like to see in upcoming builds for this series and i will see you in the next one bye bye